Allison should mentioned earlier that you know three on one off schedule for Jim Neb. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing with that schedule? Most of the time, I start three on one off. I don't give one twenty five mm -hmm. of of Nab Paclitaxel. Just cut because, that back a little yes, bit. Yes, yeah, hundred, hundred usually, maybe seventy five for some people. You know, it's kind of like two pills of Zolota. Or, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what to give yeah. by looking at them. Yeah. Um, but I then. Um, it morphs into two weeks on, one week off, mm. and then it morphs into every other week. Mm. And, and that's usually how, it, if, if they're doing well, you see the markers coming down and you're running into toxicity. So most of my patients end up being two on, one off. So right from the beginning, what are you doing? So uh, I think every other week in retrospective data has shown that it's uh, kind of has, as from Ohio State has, uh, has efficacy. I think that's much better tolerated by patients. I think it's very challenging beyond first couple of cycles. I've really seen patients like Alice, you know, everybody has their own secret sauce. So I think exactly as Alice is saying, you either have to dose reduce, you know, day eight definitely in majority of patients gets dose reduced in clinical practice if you're trying to do it. And uh, even with day one, day 15, you know, the, you know, at least the retrospective data that we have, uh, that does seem to be fairly effective in these patients and fairly tolerable yeah. uh, in these patients. I sort of apply that thinking, if they're more symptomatic, I do. The, I give them every week, see mm -hmm. if I can pull them off the ledge right. mm -hmm. early. If they're not that symptomatic, I sort of start with every other <laughs> week. What do you guys do? <clears throat> I still go with uh, day one, eight, 15, if they're, they're a reasonable candidate, and I try to use that to s sort of sift out for me um, whether doing two weeks on and then one week off is better. If they do okay with the first two and they fall off the cliff on the third week, I just use that. That's a little bit more dose intense than going to every other week. Uh, but I think it, that Ohio State data gave me a lot of comfort and reassurance that it's okay to make these modifications yeah. if they can't tolerate. But I generally start with three week on, three on and one off. Paul, I, I also start with three week on, one, eight, one You week start off. with the full and... I start with, the, well not, I, I do similar to what Alice said. I, I usually would just a nap pack of taxol. Mm -hmm. Just a nose. Just a, usually a hundred or so. Yeah. It's but easier it's, math. It's hard to... <laughs> <laughs> I would say... hundred, hundred, hundred thousand. Yeah, I would right, say in right, the right. phase one study, you know, the hundred and <clears> 125 looked pretty similar. So, yeah. So that gives me some confidence even though it's not as big a study. Um, but we, it's a good opportunity to watch them and see what happens week one to two to three because there's dramatic changes in counts especially. Yeah, Vince, because he's always fiddling with things, he's thinking, you know, solving my worry about which one to start with. He's doing this alternating thing. Yeah. Uh, Shub, I think we tagged you to look at that abstract. Do you remember what it showed? Yeah, so, uh, so alternating therapy, I think uh, what Vince presented was, uh, again, is it was a sing single kind of arm, and that's alternating therapy seemed to be uh, that the patients could tolerate in that. And I think uh, with the Prodigy 35 data, I think there was more randomized, so three arms in which you, you know, uh, essentially the similar, if you get full Farinox four months followed by five few versus full Farinox, continuously full Farinox after the break, you know, giving for four months out and giving the break and giving five FU, they had equivalent survival. And the interesting thing in that was patients who got the full Farinox followed by five FU, they actually had a higher percentage of neuropathy, but because they got more full Farinox at the back end. So I think that's a f that's for the maintenance, I think that's a fair approach to use in our patients uh, in which you give something. I really don't, unless the patient requests it, I really don't give a complete break yeah. uh, a, a lot because I just think it's a, I just think exactly what Allison is saying, this disease makes patients feel so bad. I mean, it really, it, it can improve, I think we can improve the quality of life uh, other than, I think, any other disease by actually giving chemo to patients and keeping the disease under control. So I tend not to really give them a break unless they're really struggling or they request it. Obviously, it depends on patient's preference. 